So let me uh, just do a notational shift. I want to go back to the comma notation. The, putting the end out in brackets, I think, is going to look a little confusing when um, we do a lot of stuff with G. And I don't think I'm going to need to have it out in, in uh, a separate parenthesis for a while. So we're going to revert to the comma notation. So this is G subscript and then N. Um, so we know that G of psi of omega, this first new value of psi, is a pretty decent value. Um, so let me talk, talk about the first step beyond that. Okay. Um, so we can do baby steps beyond that. And I, I want to do a little bit on that, but it's not going to be the, the real core of the thing. So we could, of course, do psi of omega plus 1. I want to point out that there's no problem with successor rule here. Um, this is not one of those things where uh, you're doing something that's a non-standard, a non-canonical form. It's exactly just psi of omega to the psi of omega, etc. Psi of omega uh, double up n. Um, and in fact, if you write that out with the Veblen notation, um, it's exactly what the limit of that is like what we were saying before with the, the Veblen limits and the, uh, the uh, exponential towers and stuff like that, turns out to be exactly just phi 1 of phi 2 of 0 plus 1. Um, and that's exactly how we go up in the Veblen notation as well. Um, I'm going to pretty much stop comparing to Veblen. Uh, again, you can put in the comments if you want more direct comparisons, but we're really off on our own thing, even though we're not going to outpace Veblen for a while, literally. Okay, so um, what's the G of this thing? Well, of course, we've talked about how when if you double up the ordinal by n, you double up the g value by n, as long as you don't have certain exceptional cases, and we're fine right here. So we're taking n triple up n plus 1, and we're double upping it by n. Well, you know, if you've already triple upped by a decent value, like anything of more than like you know, three, 3 or more, double upping by something, and something slightly less even, is really not going to do much. Um, again, by G standards, even one, an increase of plus one is something, and doing some, anything meaningful to G is a reflection of an enormous increase in F, so I don't want to diss it too much, but really by the, by the triple up standards, it's not doing hardly anything. Um, it's certainly a lot less than N triple up N plus two, that's for sure. Okay, so, hmm, underwhelming, but you know, omega is a big placeholder, and plus one isn't doing much comp compared to that, so it actually makes sense. Okay, so we're going to want to do a little more than that. But let's start, let's do a, adding a little bit more, like let's say adding little omega, okay? Well, um, the usual thing here applies is that you have big omega plus little omega. That's in our standard form where it's sort of big plus little. And to get the nth element of the um, fundamental sequence for that, we just apply that to the second part. And of course, that's just n. Oh, okay. Well, that's not too bad. All right. So the g value is going to be just g of psi of omega plus n. That's a pretty easy extension from this. We're going to take our base value of g for psi of omega, and we're just going to double up at n times. That's exactly what this says. So double up by n, n times of the triple up value. Okay. Well, again, that's pretty insignificant. At least we can kind of write it out. So what we get is n triple up n plus 1. Well, I'm going to rewrite that. Remember, n triple up n plus 1 is just n double up n triple up n. So I'm going to pull out, I'm going to pull out one of the double ups that's implicit in the definition of triple up. It's repeated double up, and I'm just going to pull out one of those guys. That just takes this down by 1. So this first part, without the n, n minus 1, is just literally unpacking a tiny bit the definition of the triple up arrow. Um, kind of quaint, right? Isn't that those those those, those triple up arrows? They, we thought they were so big once. Yeah, right. Okay, but they're useful here. Okay, so that's um, what that double up does. Uh, sorry, that's what that triple up is written as a double up, and then the dn to the n, as usual, adds n copies of n minus one. Okay, so now at least we can sort of see that it has some tiny effect, but really not a big effect. We got n triple up n in this double up slot. And yes, we're adding a measly like n squared-ish to that. Okay, so a pretty insignificant increase. So we don't really want to concentrate on those, even though it's really good to have a handle for this kind of expression, because it's all based, it all comes down to this, really, of um, something involving big omega, it's going to get more complicated, plus an ordinary countable thing. Um, it really is sort of the, the, the engine that drives it, but when we focus on the little steps, they might seem pretty puny. Okay, so in general, um, in fact, for any alpha less than psi of omega, remember this is phi 2 of 0, moderately big um, countable ordinal, um, 
we can use the most general rule, which was like a, a psi of a sum, and then put it into G. So we got G of psi of big omega plus alpha, evaluated at n, is start with what you know about G of psi of omega n, which is this triple up value, and then d sub n it, G of alpha n times. And so that's assuming you know what the G value is for this, but hopefully we do, since alpha is not assumed to be some, something huge. Okay, so what is that going to do? Well, um, there's a general story that's, that's sort of a generalization that we had here. I'm going to take n triple up n plus 1. Um, I'm going to write it in this way, n double up of n triple up n. And so now since that's n double up blah, and I'm doing more double upping on it, and I know how many times I double up by n, I can use my approximation rule. So that's n double up this big honking guy plus g of alpha of n, whatever it is, and now it might get kind of big, times n minus 1, which honestly isn't going to modify it too much in, in practical examples. Okay, so in particular, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at what happens if you put in psi of 0 in that. Okay, that might actually have some sort of effect. Because remember, psi of 0 is epsilon naught. That is no mean thing in terms of um, what it can do. It's a pretty decent ordinal. Okay, so what is it going to be? We're just going to plug it into this previous thing here. So n double up, n triple up, n. That's the part that's coming, just the fact that we had psi of omega to start with. And then we're going to add in g of psi of 0, comma n times n minus 1. Okay. Um, that is n double up n. Ah, you know what? It doesn't quite cut it. n triple up n is much bigger, almost always, than n double up n, even times an n minus 1, which doesn't really matter. And so, to a very good approximation by our standards, it's really just still n triple up n plus 1, which is exactly what we started with. So this is a little weird. I mean, admittedly, we're doing an approximation, but it seemed like one of those things, one of those approximations we usually do, um, and it doesn't seem like we've really gotten anywhere. Okay, so that might suggest, oh, well, sort of doing this process again might not get us anywhere, but let me show you what really does. So what we're going to do is notice what we've done. We've taken 0. We took psi of it. Okay, so that's our starting point. And then we added that to omega and did psi of that. And let me show you what happens if we do that again. Okay, so here's what we're doing. And this is going to be the heart of the whole thing. Uh, we take psi of 0. We put it as an omega plus. So now it's one of the, the really interesting inputs to psi, an uncountable input in particular. We take that and we, we let psi act on that. Now that collapses it back down to an, uh, a countable ordinal, something we could put into G or into F or whatever. But then we recycle it. We add it to omega again, boost it back up into the uncountable region, and then collapse it again with psi. And then we see what happens. That's some countable ordinal. Not sure how to think about it. Pretty big, kind of confusing. But, well, let's at least analyze the G value to get us some sense of it. Okay, so what's that going to do? Well, notice what we've done. It's still g of psi of something plus something, where the something is now a bit more complicated. Okay, so we're going to start out with g of psi of omega, and we're going to double up, we're going to n double up it, that's the d, the d sub n, this many times. Ooh, hey, we're putting something in a different slot. That's exactly what we like to see. So we're taking n double up, n triple up n, that's the slightly unpacked version of the n triple up n plus 1 from here. And we are n double upping it, aha, a triple up number of times. That is significant. So now we're getting n double up, n triple up n, approximately, um, we're getting that plus this many times n minus 1 from the many, 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 many double ups. So this is really where it where it comes in. It's not that d sub n was such a powerful operation in itself. It was really fading out in its usefulness. And that's what we saw here, is that when you just do like one double up or, a, or it's some sort of medium number of double ups, it just doesn't really make a, make a dent on what this was already a really huge number, n triple up n plus one. But if you can make sure that the, that number itself, that huge number itself, gets into the double up slot, then even though d sub n is no longer really each time a super significant operation, if you can do it many times, which is the whole point of every one of these videos pretty much, um, then something cool happens. Now it's this thing that dominates over this guy, 
simply because it's an n plus one and triple up grows very fast. This isn't doing much for us, but it's not it's not hurting us. Um, and therefore, it's about it's very close to n double up n triple up n plus one, and that is the definition of n triple up n plus two. Okay, not an absolutely stunning radical increase, but pretty decent. And remember, this is g we're talking about. Anytime g increases significantly, that is something to take note of, because f is going to just be ridiculously bigger. Let's do it one more time. Okay, so we take psi of zero as our initial thing. We add it to omega uh, as omega plus psi of zero, definitely in that order is super important, and then put it into psi. We add it to omega and put it into psi, and then one last time, we add it to omega and put it into psi one more time. That is some big-ish, we hope, countable ordinal. We put it into G, put an N into that, see what happens. So once again, now we're getting an even bigger um, finite number of D sub Ns applied to our base value, G of omega, psi of omega N. Okay, we do the same unpacking, express it as a little bit of a double up with a f what we thought was a fairly big index on the right-hand side, but now, this is roughly n triple up n plus two, that many of this mm, respectable but not individually impressive function. That takes the n triple up n that was in the, the double up slot and adds n triple up n plus two times n minus one. And really all that survives there is the n triple up n plus two to a good approximation. And so roughly we're getting n triple up n plus three. Okay, so every time we do this process, take psi of omega plus something and then recycle that into psi of omega plus something, etc. That's what's getting us a meaningful increase in the g values, which of course must mean this is not a bad way to create a big, big, a much bigger ordinal. Okay, so that is really a key. Okay, so now what we've, what we've basically sneaked up on here is finally an example of the most important rule for psi. Secretly, we've already seen one example, but it wasn't obvious, and I'll, I'll talk about that uh, later. Okay, what is, what would you define psi of omega plus big omega of n to be? Okay, and here's the trick. Here's the thing. We can't just say, oh, let's sneak that brackets in right in here after the big omega, because there absolutely cannot be a fundamental sequence converging to omega. No matter how clever we are, we can't have a sequence, which is by definition a countable, its image is a countable set of ordinals, it can't possibly converge to big omega. And that's because um, of the nature of big omega. It's not just because it itself is uncountable, but the the terminology for that is it's of uncountable cofinality. And it's one of those things I probably don't want to go into the generalities of. The definition, though, is simply that there's no fundamental sequence converging to it. No matter what you want to choose, there just isn't any sequence going up there. Okay, so here's what we can't do. We can't say psi of a big omega plus a big omega, brackets n, is psi of big omega plus big omega, big omega brackets n. This is totally bogus, is absolutely false, and so I'm just going to erase it so you're not even distracted by it, okay? But, so we, but we still want to figure out what is this ordinal? And this guy is supposed to be a countable ordinal. Isn't it, the output of psi is supposed to be these countable guys that we can put into f's and g's. So it is supposed to have a fundamental sequence. So what do we do? And we do exactly what we were just doing. What we do is we define a function psi of omega plus x, or alpha, or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Um, and we're going to iterate that just like you just saw with a reasonable starting point, namely psi of zero. So we're going to consider the sequence we were just looking at and, and analyzing the g's for. Psi of zero, which is epsilon naught. Then psi of omega plus psi of zero. And then psi of omega plus psi of, you know, et cetera. Exactly the ones we were just talking about. Okay. And notice that um, this isn't circular or, or not well-founded. If we want to look at this, I focused on the g value for this, but if you want to think about do we even know that there's actually an ordinal here to define the g value or f value for? Um, remember, omega plus psi of zero, psi of zero is epsilon naught. It is a countable ordinal. It's a limit of things like one, two, three, omega, omega two, omega squared, omega to the omega, omega to the omega, omega, the omega, et cetera, okay? And so that is definitely something where all of our usual rules of psi of something plus something do work. 
for defining fundamental sequences. So this is just the limit of psi of omega plus little omega to the little omega to the little omega, etc. And as long as we can figure out a fundamental sequence for this guy, which we just claimed we did, we could, that's a countable ordinal, it has a fundamental sequence, we can do the usual stuff for, uh, for these guys. So for all of these, it's really okay to do our usual thing with fundamental sequences for when you have a sum, fundamental sequence for the right-hand input of the sum. Um, it's just that this thing, we couldn't do that for. But now we've got a way around that, and this is it's not just a, a, a workaround, it's the fundamental idea of how these guys are going to go on into the, the big omega world. Okay, so a little more succinct way to do that, um, and I'll and end this video in a minute, is define h of x, if you want to be precise, I'm going to call it h sub omega plus blah, I'm going to put a dot there, of x. That's just a very fancy way of saying take omega and add x. Okay, um, and so we're going to have a bunch of different versions of the h function, and if I need, feel I need to label it, I'll label it this kind of way. Okay, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say psi of omega plus omega, brackets n, which, if we want to abbreviate that, that's psi of omega 2 of n. It's the usual way of, of, of summarizing, um, adding something to itself. The nth term of the fundamental sequence for that is start with psi of 0 and do this two-step process n times. Do h of it, which is just, right now, it's a sort of overly fancy way of saying add it to omega uh, and put it on the right, and then put it into psi, and then do that again and again and again. And remember, it's kind of this up and down process. You start with a uh, you know a decent size countable ordinal. You add it to omega, and it's an uncountable ordinal here. This is not something we're used to dealing with. But the great thing is, is that we're not we don't really need to know much about it. And this is the the, the sense in which omega, big omega is kind of a placeholder for just a, a process that we're going to do. Then you immediately collapse it back down. Okay. And what does that collapsing involve? It involves understanding. Like, what is psi of big omega plus 1? What is psi of big omega plus little omega? What is psi of big omega plus uh, omega to the omega? So that's why I did a few examples of that. Um, and then we do it again and again. And every time it goes up into the uncountables and then back down to countables. Up into the uncountables, down to the countables. And, of course, it finishes with the countables. Okay. Um, and if necessary, this is our interest, we can put that into G and we can put it into F. Okay. Um, so, as I've said, this is really what finally makes explicit some stuff I was pretty vague about before. It's a first tiny example of this slogan I had, which was, use arithmetic with big omega to organize recursive iteration. So we have big omega plus a countable ordinal. That's a very simple piece of arithmetic with big omega. And we're using that as a, um, as a template to describe an iterative process. Um, to create bigger and bigger countable ordinals. Or another way to say it is define a family of functions based on arithmetic with big omega. So psi itself, uh, which when we put in a sort of medium-sized input, produces nicely big but not incredibly um, new ordinals. And then psi composed with this h function, and then we're going to have psi composed with h's that involve more complicated arithmetic with omega. And we'll see uh, examples of that very soon. So I, I hope this is a satisfying place Right now, we finally get a little bit of a sense of what's the new engine and what is the big omega about. So I, I hope that's, that's satisfying, and we'll, we'll definitely go on um, very soon.